Good morning and thanks so much for joining us here on the Good Morning Show. It is, ooh, <laughs> on after GMS. <laughs> it is 7.45, Taran, stop laughing. <laughs> so hard. <laughs> Everybody else is just like, it's all cool. You're just like dying over there, but it's cool. I got you. That brotherly love here. <laughs> all right, so it is after GMS, something we do on Facebook Live every Monday through Friday at 7.45. Let me introduce you to everybody here. Stacey Spivey, Taran Kirksey, my annoying big brother apparently, and, <laughs> <laughs> and Ed Matthews here. I'm Tracy McCain. All right, let's get started with the forecast here. Who wants to deliver some positive news? Oh, perfect. I think I'll take it. I can give you a little bit of positivity and then things might go a little bit downhill as we go through the rest of the week. All right, so for today, we'll stay mainly dry. Temperature is not too hot, not too cold. Most of us will see our high temperatures end up in the mid 70s. For tomorrow, we'll have to keep an eye on radar. Tomorrow, we're going to see a good chance of showers and storms. That rain could be heavy at times as an area of low pressure moves on in. And I can't rule out some flash flooding as well. So we'll have to watch that again carefully for you for Wednesday. And then after that, we'll see another chance of showers and storms late Thursday, and then another one late Friday, and then another chance of showers and storms late Saturday before it looks like we'll dry out as we go from Sunday on into Monday. That's a quick look at your seven day forecast. All right, so the headlines are out there, right? No mask, no service. Stacy, though, there are some details on a restaurant that's giving its own set of recommendations. That's right. Over in California, a restaurant is now gaining a lot of attention for a sign. Let's take a look at it. It says caution, no social conditioning, no oxygen deprivation mask, no latex dirty germ spreader not required here. This may not be for you. More businesses are starting to reopen and there are a lot of opinions about the guidelines. So we want you to weigh in on this this morning. Who do you think should be responsible for enforcing guidelines? You can go in now on our Facebook page. Weigh in. Tell us what you think about it. Uh, let's see. We have a comment from George that says citizens, not government. Let's see if anybody else has weighed in yet. Just continue to keep chatting. I don't think anybody else has yet. So. I guess we can talk about it. I think I would say that a lot of this has to do with your personal responsibility. I do think that businesses need to have certain guidelines in place. I, I couldn't believe that about the California restaurant, but to each their own. Um, and you are the one that gets to decide, would you be willing to go into that restaurant or not? It's up to you if you feel comfortable or not going to different different places, depending on their guidelines. Um, I guess I'll toss it back over to you, Tracy, to see what you think. Yeah, I will definitely take responsibility for myself and my children and my family, of course. But I also want to see uh, it, restaurants and businesses that I uh, shop at or eat at uh, also taking some responsibility and making sure that their conditions are sanitary for not only me, but for everyone in there. But in terms of keeping a safe social distance, 
I don't have a problem saying, you know, up, oh, you know, make way, I'm coming through. I need, I need a few more feet. I did that in the newsroom the other day. There was a small group around and I was walking through and I was like, coming through, six feet of space, please. And you know, everybody, no one had a problem. Granted, there are only 10 people here in the entire building at one time. So that wasn't difficult. Uh, Taran, what do you think? Um, I think it's personal responsibility as well. I mean, you, you, you're not going to you know, have the police in there trying to enforce this. They have other things that they need to deal with. At the end of the day, we just need to be respectful of one another. I mean, social distancing should have been a thing long before the pandemic. You know, give other people space. Um, if people want to, uh, you know, wear a mask, since it's not a law that you have to, then they should be able to. If you don't want to, you know, then you need to respect the people that do and make sure that you give them space and everybody just be nice to one another and we will all be okay. But <laughs> again, respect is the main thing and personal responsibility um, is I think uh, another point as well. Yeah, it gives new meaning to that personal, you know, space around you, you know, that respect level. Uh, Ed Matthews, mm -hmm. you know, it used to be, you know, fans would just run up to you and give you a hug, but not so much anymore, huh? <laughs> yes, unfortunately. Love those hugs, but uh, not in this day and time. Um, you know how big I am on personal responsibility. Uh, I think that is a large part of it. But also uh, the businesses, the restaurants and the other businesses have a responsibility to follow the rules and regulations or the guidelines, if you will, that were set forth by uh, the health department. If you go into a restaurant and you kind of don't like the what you see, you don't think they're uh, practicing uh, you know, uh, safety in that particular restaurant, you do have the right to walk out. And I think if they lose enough business, they'll get the message that they've got to comply. They've got to make their location and their restaurant healthy for all their patrons. All right, so it sounds like, Stacy, pretty much everyone is on the same accord here, but do we have any more comments from people online? Yeah, it seems like a lot of people are agreeing with us. They're saying that it should be a citizen's responsibility. Um, however, one person did weigh in. Beverly says, if you don't feel comfortable, stay home. If you feel comfortable, go out and don't have neighbors turning on neighbors. Uh, Ramona says personal responsibility and the business owners if they want us to shop or eat in their establishment. So um, and I do want to mention that the story from that station in California, one of our sister stations out there, uh, they had over 500 comments about that sign that I was talking about that restaurant. And surprisingly, most of those comments were in agreement with that sign and most of them were asking where is this restaurant i want to go visit it so um i mean people have different opinions and um it looks like though here in in the triad for our viewers it's they say citizens responsibility all right on that note we're going to turn to your morning headlines we have another conversation in just a moment but first we need to get to the latest covid 19 numbers as it continues to spread across the state State health leaders are reporting 742 new cases in 24 hours, bringing the total here in North Carolina to 23,964 cases. Of course, the state is testing more and data shows just 6.9% of the nearly 350,000 cases are positive. Digging deeper, should we say 350,000 tests that have been performed. That should have said tests, excuse me. Uh, digging deeper here though, Guilford County cases, about 1,073, 52 deaths in the county. Forsyth County has 969 cases and there are nine deaths being reported there. Well, President Donald Trump says he could move the Republican National Convention out of Charlotte, North Carolina. In a series of tweets, the president said, quote, I love the great state of North Carolina so much that I insisted on having the Republican National Convention in Charlotte at the end of August. Unfortunately, Democratic Governor Roy Cooper is still in shutdown mode and unable to guarantee that by August we will be allowed attendance into the arena. The president went on to say if the RNC cannot use the Spectrum Center in Charlotte, he will find another site to do so. Governor Roy Cooper said in response saying, quote, state health officials are working with the RNC and will review its plans as they make decisions about how to hold the convention in Charlotte. We'll keep you updated.
If you're finding it hard to feed your family, your neighbors are step stepping up to help you. Just stop by the corner of Pleasant Street and Watown Street in Winston-Salem at 11 this morning. A group of people are handing out food to neighborhood families for free. And Mount Zion Baptist Church is also giving away food today. They've been doing this every Tuesday for the last two months. The church is partnering with Out of the Garden Project and Chick-fil-A to provide the free meals. The giveaway will happen at the church on Alamance Church Road in Greensboro. There you'll find 800 hot meals, fresh produce and Chick-fil-A. Gates open at 1030 this morning and the food giveaway starts at noon going until all the food is gone. It is the National Mental Health Awareness Month and the coronavirus pandemic has created both a physical and emotional hardship for thousands across the nation. WFMY News 2's Candace Red shares ways to cope with the COVID-19 crisis. The COVID-19 pandemic can cause stress in both children and adults. We know that stress can lead to fear, sleepless nights, change in eating patterns, and chronic health or mental problems. Well, you can cope with stress by taking care of your body. That includes avoiding alcohol and drugs, eating healthy, exercising regularly, and getting plenty of sleep. Well, health officials also recommend taking deep breaths, stretching, or meditating daily. You might also want to consider taking a break from news outlets constantly covering the health crisis. Well, Dr. David Gutterman is the clinical director of LeBauer Behavioral Medical in Greensboro, and he says you should make time to unwind by participating in safe activities you enjoy, like walking or going for a bike ride. Try to structure your day, stay involved and engaged in a, in a variety of act activities. Um, don't stay in front of the computer or the television all day long. Um, get outside. Do so in a in a uh, in a way, of course, that's safe. The CDC says that you should also do your best to stay connected with others and talk with people who you trust about your feelings and concerns relating to the coronavirus pandemic. But for more details on that, all you have to do is visit our website. That's WFMYNews2.com. All right, something really cool is happening tomorrow morning. For the first time in nearly a decade, astronauts will blast into orbit right here from American soil. NASA astronauts will take a journey into outer space. That liftoff scheduled for Wednesday at 4.33 p.m. exactly from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And we will have more about that tomorrow on the Good Morning Show. Japan just ended its nationwide state of emergency. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe says even though the order is lifted, it doesn't mean the outbreak is over. Japan avoided the large outbreak that we saw here in the United States and across Europe by barring foreign travelers who went to highly affected countries and asking people to social distance, wearing masks to restaurants and shops were required and uh, those changing hours uh, for them as well. Bars, live music venues, gyms, they were all closed, and that was part of Japan's approach. So let's take a look back at history today. Today marks 80 years since one of the defining moments of World War II. It took place on the French beaches of Dunkirk between May 26 and June 4, 1940. The British Royal Navy, along with thousands of civilian boats, set sail in a heroic attempt to rescue the nearly half a million British and French troops stranded in the face of an advancing German army. In all, 338,000 soldiers were rescued during this mission. Wow, incredible wow. pictures to look at. Stacey, there's even another incredible picture that's making the rounds online. Yeah, it's a photo of a Georgia Tech football game during the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic. It's all over the internet this morning. Take a look at this. It's a vintage picture showing football fans wearing masks <laughs> in the stands. The photographer's grandson says it appears history does repeat itself. And it's just so crazy to see that a photo taken 102 years ago is still as relevant as ever today. It gets us to wondering if football games will look like this when they return in the fall. So what do you think should be done to get fans back into stadiums? I cannot wait for football season. It's something that I look forward to every year. Now, as far as what it will look like, I think we'll see less people, hopefully, 
Um, maybe not after seeing the images out of uh, Missouri and places across the country this weekend where crowds were packing beaches and pools and not practicing social distancing. But I would hope that um, in the fall, if we're able to go back into arenas and stadiums, that people will practice social distancing. I think I will have to take a look at the numbers and what health leaders and um, state leaders are recommending at that time to decide if I think I should wear a mask if I do go to a football game, but I really hope that I am able to. Tracy, what about you? Um, I'm not going to go to any athletic events just yet. I'm going to wait and make a determination uh, later as, you know, information develops, right? Day by day, literally here in the state and across the nation. But I will say, I think college athletics might look a little bit different than the NFL. They have a lot more capabilities, I think, in terms of broadcasting without um, fans and I mean, college football brings in so much money too when you think about the advertisers that pay for that space. I don't mind watching from my couch. I, I love watching sports from home. Uh, it allows me to interact with like, you know, my family and really get a tabs on the game and make as much noise as I want without being annoying to the next person. <laughs> so I'm cool with watching sports at home uh, for the next, you know, however long it takes, as long as we're safe, right? So Taran, what about you? Yeah, you know, I, I definitely can can see that. You know, it's it's always fun to watch football in your pajamas. You know, you <laughs> wouldn't do that at a game. Well, I'm not gonna say I've never gone to a game in pajamas. It's been a long <laughs> life. Uh, but <laughs> I will say this. You know, um, I do think that it may look a little bit different for sure. And you know, some of these colleges have huge stadiums, and so if you do decrease the capacity, you know, folks can definitely. Uh, be six feet apart if they're, you know, not in the same family or whatever. So I am interested to see how they figure out how to do this. Hopefully they can figure out a way that we do have a college football season. Um, I think America needs it because everyone is definitely uh, kind of high strung right now and on edge. But, you know, we'll, we'll see how things unfold. And as you mentioned, Tracy, you know, the NFL and other professional leagues certainly do have more capacity to be able to spend the money to do different things in order to put their seasons on. So it's certainly a uh, year unlike any other year that I've experienced firsthand. Um, and I think we're all hoping to get back to some sense of normalcy, whatever you can say to normal um, mm -hmm. sooner rather than later. Yeah, I like your air quotes because that's <laughs> necessary right now. Nobody knows what normal means anymore. Mm -hmm. All right, Ed Matthews, uh, looking forward to sports in the fall. Yes, I totally agree. We need to bring back the sports. It's uh, a great part of uh, our U.S. history and, and our past, you know, you know, spending time with friends and family and, you know, kind of blowing off some steam and rooting for the home team and, uh, and all that. I, I think uh, what I would do, I usually watch all my games on TV, but in the rare event that I would go uh, to a ball game, um, I would review uh, the recommendations that they have uh, for being safe uh, in the stadium and go from there. I think, again, personal responsibility. If, if you want to snuggle up against 500 people, you know, that's certainly your right. Uh, but if they, uh, you know, have social distancing and kind of space people out in the stadium, I'm all for that. And I would have no problem at all wearing a mask, although I can't figure out how I would eat the five or six hot dogs <laughs> that I would order from the concession stand. I'm still working on that. Yeah, you just hang it from one ear, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of like unfold one side. Just long enough for you to eat and then just kind of put it back on. That's, That's what I would do. <laughs> but I guess we'll have to wait and see, you know, what happens, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's already almost June. And um, I think I read a story last week where the NCAA is allowing college athletes to move back onto campus beginning June 1st. Uh, so that's mm -hmm. next week, uh, which means that their practices might start in some <laughs> capacity. Um, and also Charlotte's, uh, their basketball team, uh, reporting to duty today so but differently so it looks like there's some anticipation of fall sports we just don't know how it's going to look just yet Stace. Uh, what are people commenting online yeah a lot of people are weighing in and also do want to mention that today uh, the local athletic leaders or I guess the statewide local athletic and and local athletic leaders are meeting at four o'clock this afternoon to talk about 
what do sports look like come fall for student athletes here in the triad and across the state. So of course we're going to keep you updated on decisions that they make or just the discussions that they have. Um, a lot of people Tracy saying that they're going to watch from home. Dana says as much as I love Jiho, which is I'm thinking the greatest homecoming on earth, right? There you go, Stacy. That's right. That's what everyone's saying in my ear. So uh, she says as much as she'd love to go to that, she would rather be safe and watch games at home. Kimberly says I love watching games at home, so she's right there with you, Tracy. Ramona says it is a wait and see situation as always. And then Ed, a lot of people giving your wolf pack some pride out here. <laughs> I see a lot of wolf emojis and red hearts. Yes. And George says, go wolf pack. Sorry, Turan. <laughs> oh, this must be Ooh. from the earlier conversation, Turan. Did you want to revisit that or are you letting that go? <laughs> oh, we can revisit that. September the 12th, I believe, is the wow. date mm -hmm. where uh, Mississippi oh, he State even is knows. supposed to. Yeah, supposed to come to Raleigh and I have my cowbell that annoys oh, everyone. Goodness. If you ever been to Mississippi State game, this is one of the things you do. Those you things are so annoying. Yeah, you know, I have a fever and the only prescription is one camera. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it's, a, it's a joke from SNL back then. Uh. But yeah, so, you know, we'll see. Uh, we're hoping that that can go on uh, as scheduled, but we'll have to kind of wait and see how things unfold. Yeah, and so your, uh, is it Bulldogs, Mississippi yeah. State? Mm -hmm. Taking yeah. on the Wolf Pack. Taran knew the date, September 12th. Uh, Ed, I guess, you know, before yeah. you do weather, you should comment at least. Oh, I mean, he's you, challenging you. Of course I'm going to comment. <laughs> the last thing I want to hear is Taran's cowbell going, <laughs> going off, you know? Uh, my, uh, my wolf, uh, I got a, a little doll wolf. I love it. It's, uh, it's uh, in my bedroom on my bed. It doesn't make a sound, but... Yeah, I imagine when those two teams get together, there's going to be a lot of hooping and hollering, and mm -hmm. it'll be interesting for those two teams to get together. I think it's going to be great. Fingers crossed for the Wolf Pack, of course. All right, let's look ahead in the seven-day forecast, and I'm sure Taran's making all kinds of faces off camera. But anyway, he is a dear friend of mine. Let's look at the seven-day because the chances of rain are going to be on the increase tomorrow. You know, I look up at the sky now and I see a couple of patches, tiny patches of blue. Now the clouds are going to win out today, but we're hoping for some peaks of sunshine as we head through the day. Only an isolated shower possible, 20% chance or less. We're into the mid 70s today, but look how we ramp up the chances of showers and storms later tomorrow on into Thursday, Friday, and even Saturday. Moisture comes in from the south, and then a cold front heads our way for later Saturday and Saturday night. But once that front moves on through, we do have an opportunity uh, that we're going to dry things out by Sunday and Monday, but get the umbrella back out. I think you're going to need it over the next several days after today. Yeah, I think I've listened to you guys enough now to know that this is kind of like a summer pattern, right? Yeah. Heating of the day, afternoon mm -hmm. storms uh, sometimes can be uh, potentially threatening. So we'll just listen to you guys as we always do to kind of guide us day by day. We'll keep an eye on it. All right, sounds good. See, I pay attention in science class. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us here on After GMS. All of your comments have been great. We've definitely looked at all of them, and we appreciate you weighing in on our conversations. We'll be back at it tomorrow at 745 right here on Facebook Live. Thanks so much, and we'll see you later. Take care.